The first section we're going to dive into today is traffic. How do we get more people to show up so that we can start getting a relationship with those people, hoping they will eventually give, give generously, and contribute to our revenue goal? Traffic is our first order of business. To get people to give, first you have to get them to care, right? Everyone who's watching this presumably has a website, um, but people aren't just showing up to your website ready to give. We have to get people into a relationship with us digitally in the same way that we do through direct mail, in the same way that we do relationally uh, in order to start a um, conversation with them that will result hopefully in them giving a generous gift to our organization. When you think about traffic, there are really two types of traffic. Number one, there's traffic you are in control of. And number two, your traffic, there's traffic you're not in control of. I call this push and pull traffic. Push traffic is traffic that you are in control of. This is really where we're going to focus today. Pull traffic are traffic sources that you are not necessarily in control of. It doesn't mean you shouldn't focus on these areas, but tomorrow, if you wanted to send a fundraising appeal, it is in your best interest to have as many push traffic opportunities as possible. And what I mean by push is traffic where you could push a button and reach a bunch of people instantly. So let's talk first about the traffic um, that comes to us that we're not necessarily in control of, right? Um, some of this is direct traffic. So direct traffic. Um, these are people who type your organization into their search bar or their address bar on their browser and they come to your site. Those people are great. They're looking for your organization. Uh, they are often your highest motivated uh, source of traffic. They're coming maybe to give a gift. Maybe they're saying, I want to go to your.org and give a gift. They might be motivated by a television commercial they saw or something they heard. They might be coming home from an event. They might have received a direct mail letter. Um, they might be a longtime loyal donor who's just trying to come back and give their annual gift. Uh, but direct traffic is a great source of traffic. If you looked in Google Analytics, which is a free tool that will allow you to measure the traffic on your site, you will often see that direct traffic has the highest conversion rate. The problem is that you can't just get more people to go type in your web address and come to your site. It's very hard to do. If there was a magic button to get you to generate a lot more direct traffic, then we could do that. Some of your advertising can actually send people this way, uh, but that's going to that's gonna be in a, a push method, not a pull method. So direct traffic, very high converting, but it's hard just to get people uh, to come and show up to you, right? Referral traffic. A referral traffic is a type of traffic where other sites send you uh, traffic. And so you can um, actively try to engage this um, by getting your links um, on other people's sites around the web. If you have people who care about your cause and you want them to link to your organization, you can work with those influencers in order to uh, try to get uh, them to link to you. But ultimately, you're at the mercy of how much traffic they're generating, and so you're not in control of it. Now, there is a type of pull traffic that you actually can affect, um, and that is organic search. I'm gonna put that down in pull traffic uh, because um, while you can affect this through search engine optimization or SEO, um, it is a very long game. And um, there are a lot of factors that you can uh, put into place on your website to get more people who are searching not for your organization, but for some of the things uh, that uh, you offer. For instance, Dallas Food Bank. I live in Dallas, I'm looking for a food bank to give to. You can do things on your website to get your website to pop up in the first position for a term like Dallas Food Bank. However, you can't make more people search for Dallas Food Bank. And so I'm gonna put that in the pull category. That's, that's probably somewhere technically in the middle here, but we're gonna put those in the pull category. Those sources of traffic are great. A lot of times these are downstream of other efforts, but I wanna to focus today on push traffic, which is traffic that you can get to show up at a moment's notice. If you had a emergency or a crisis or a just a specific fundraising campaign that you wanted to drive traffic for, uh, tomorrow, you should focus on traffic that you control or own. Now, um, I'm gonna uh, start from the bottom here and start kind of ranking up in, in terms of uh, these next uh, couple push traffic sources. So first is what we're gonna call organic social traffic. And this might be, um, an example of this is making a Facebook post. Uh, several years ago, 
Um, everyone really focused on building their fan bases and their likes on their Facebook pages um, because they thought this would be a great source of push traffic. But the problem is um, when your uh, users, whether they like your page, um, you know, have liked your pages for years or whether they're a new like, um, they're only gonna see your posts as much as the Facebook or the Instagram or the TikTok algorithm uh, gives them access to do. So this is not pure push traffic. Now, can you get traffic from organic social? Yes. Should it be your primary focus of growing your uh, sources of push traffic? No, because ultimately there is a um, mediator in between you and your fans, which is the algorithm. So let's uh, take one step up and let's look at uh, paid social traffic. So when you give any one of these platforms, Google, Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, uh, any of these traffic uh, sources, when you give them a dollar, they're going to show your ad to people, right? Uh, so paid social is a way uh, that you can get more traffic to your site. Now, this is all predicated on how much you are willing to spend. If you're willing to spend a lot of money, uh, then you can drive, presumably, a lot of traffic if you have a really great ad and can send people to your site. Um, but ultimately, paid social has a limiting factor too, which is how much you are willing to spend. Uh, paid search, I'm going to put as our next spot. Um, the reason I'm ranking this slightly above paid social is because paid search can be very high intent traffic. And so going back to my example, if I'm looking for Dallas Food Bank, you could pay a small amount of money to make sure that you capture one of the top spots in either Google or Bing uh, for paid search. And so um, this is high intent traffic if they're looking for you by searching for your brand or by searching for what your brand represents, the cause that you represent, you can get in front of some high intent people. However, there's still a limiting factor here which is um, how much you are willing to pay, how much competition you have in the marketplace. The number one, um, and I guess number two, A and B sources I'm gonna give you of push traffic um, that can uh, help you the most in terms of trying to grow your fundraising revenue is going to be email and SMS. And I'm thinking about these two, uh, put them uh, on the same line here because uh, this is a message that you can send out um, one-to-one -one with your constituents in order to reach them with a message at the right time. And so when we think about traffic, we must understand a few things. First off, traffic is not all evenly weighted. When you look in Google Analytics, you'll see a lot of different traffic sources, but they're not all evenly weighted. They're not all equally as helpful um, in helping you achieve your revenue goals. And so when we talk about traffic, we need to understand um, there are areas that we should focus in these push areas, and there may be some areas that uh, we could focus on, but they may come um, secondarily or um, downstream from these primary areas of focus. And so if we wanted to grow our traffic in the most active way possible, and what I mean by active is the way that we can actually affect it, um, we need to think about uh, engaging one of these uh, four channels. And I, I've, I've ordered them in this order because I want to give you some understanding of value. Um, when we look at different organizations, we see that uh, many organizations we work with um, and we see and we have access to their analytics, um, a lot of their traffic and a lot of their revenue comes through email and SMS or text messaging. That's because these are highly transactional methods of communication and also because with the push of a button, you can go reach your subscribers. Are there challenges to email? Sure. You've got to get into the inbox. You're competing with different messages. There are challenges to text messaging. People can opt out, um, as Seth Godin talks about permission marketing. Uh, but uh, with the right uh, relationship, we can grow our active email and text file in order to reach more people with our fundraising messages when we need to reach them. Paid search and paid social, both of these should be in place. They should be a part of a traffic generating strategy. Uh, a lot of, your ability to do these will, will really be determined by your budget. Um, and so um, that's why I've ranked these a little lower. And then organic social is something that you will pick up, you will build an audience. Um, but with that mediator of the algorithm, you will always be somewhat limited in your ability to go reach people who you want uh, to give to your organization and who might be inclined to care about your organization, which is the first step to giving.